Welcome to Admire, the Art of Business. I'm your host, Admire Itari Myra, also known as Tsewa. In these episodes, coming in now and going on forward, we're going to be showcasing the immigrant communities. People are doing fantastic work. Work that they are in different areas, whether it's healthcare, administration, accounting, or any other sectors that they're working at. And we've got a lot of people in there doing a fantastic job. But the thing is, they are really hiding out there. They're not coming out. They're not coming out with their successes. They're not coming out with the things that are doing well. So what we want to do is bring them to the table, have a chat with them, see their career progression, where they started, where they had like challenges, think that they, the challenge that they had, what they managed to, you know, whoop and jump around those things that they had. And what we are doing in there is we'll go back to the immigrant communities to inspire the youngsters, the people that they've got their own personal you know, goals, things that they're looking at. And they think that probably they can't really achieve that. But because they've seen someone have done it, and obviously this is Australia, what we call home, and there's a lot of opportunities out there. And if you want to do anything, you can do it. All what you need is the focus, the attention, and the hard work. Thank you. Welcome once again to Admire the Art of Business. My name is Admire Itai Myra, also known as Tsewa. Today I've got um, a special guest. A guest, he is a young man aged 23 years of old. He finished his high school in 2017 and started studying Bachelor in Engineering in 2018. The following year, which is 2019, the young man pursued, started to pursue a career in real estate. Then boom, 2022, he co-founded a real estate company. His company right now, he has managed to sell 13 properties just on a single month. Please help me welcome Peter Goramba. Hey, Peter, welcome. Me. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> this is good, man. We'll talk about the number 13 properties one day, uh, like one month. Yeah, definitely. One of the biggest achievements that I have done. That's great, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Is that the, like the, the average in terms of the industry? No, that's that's a big number in that's terms a big of the number. industry. But um, yeah, av average, I'll probably say probably average around seven. Okay. But yeah, 13 was probably the biggest one that we've had. Okay, okay. Wow, that's that's, that's really good. That's really good. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, briefly tell us, who, who is Peter? Um, Peter is an ambitious 23-year-old man. Um, very driven and from a young age I've always known that I wanted to be in business so I've just always looked for opportunities to pursue that. Mm, mm. Yeah. And what what that moment in time where you thought you're gonna do business? What really happened? What 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 was happening in your mind? Um I think throughout high school yeah I was always looking for opportunities to make money whether because I wasn't working at the time or I always found you know something some other way to for me to like monetize something or find a product to sell. Okay. So that's when I kind of realized like, I keep going through the same cycle and I had the business mind from a very young age. You so know? right now, when you're in high school, right? Yeah. There were things like you're telling me right now, you're selling one or two things in there. What are the things? Do you want to, you know, maybe go back and we can track back the things that you were selling? Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I had a period where I would buy fundraising chocolates and then yeah. I would sell them um, for a profit throughout the school. and. Um, believe it or not, I'd have like 60 chocolates and I'll manage to sell one at recess and then one at lunch. So Oh, yeah. from 60? Yeah, from 60. So I'll sell 30, 30 chocolates at recess and 30 chocolates at lunch. Oh. Yeah, so I had like a system where pretty much um, I would eat and pretty much I'd spend both my lunch breaks just selling chocolates throughout the school. Okay. Do you think that also helped you in terms of your interpersonal skills and getting around your negotiating skills as well that probably you're using now? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think it built that part of being a salesperson where um, you, you can take no from one person and then move on straight to the next. So basically, like um, being a big school, there's probably like a thousand students there at yeah. the time, and I only had sixty chocolates, so I knew like you got to buy. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but yeah. how difficult is that? Because as a salesperson, sometimes you get a no. I've just said it right now. You get a no from this person, but you have to pick up yourself to the next prospective client. And you still have to, you know, pick up yourself, be, you know, um, yeah. How, how do you how do you take that? Um, over time, it becomes something that you get used to, and you need yeah. to adapt yourself to the type of person that you're speaking to. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's part of the game. The noise are always going to be there. So yeah, yeah. You just, you just have to learn to move on, and then 
um, learn on what you've did wrong with the previous person okay and then improve that and so if you meet the same type of person next time then you will know exactly what to change and how you can convert that client yeah that's continuous improvement hey that's yeah. that's that's really good okay Quaramba. right let's talk about your family how big is the family that you come from um i've got two sisters okay uh one older one younger so i'm in the middle oh you're in the middle yeah oh, okay wow that, that that's good yeah. and um did you migrate from from zimbabwe or you were born here i migrated from zimbabwe in 2011. how old are you then um i think i was 11 or 12. i was in year six okay so i think probably 12. but ah okay okay and what year were you in Year six, so year six. Last, last year of primary school. Ah, okay, so did you come like in the beginning of the year or in the middle of the year? I think I came in March, March. and then we didn't start school till June. Okay, okay. Yeah. And how did you get, when you went to school? Because I believe maybe the education system is probably a little bit different. How, how, how do you say that? Is it the same? Is it different from, from Zim? Um, it was very different because um, I feel like in Zim there was like a system that was set. Yeah, yeah. And everyone had to follow that system. Yeah, yeah. Whereas in Australia, it's like, um, the, depending on the teacher, everything is different. And they made, uh, especially primary school, it, yeah. they made it more fun. Uh-huh. And obviously, you didn't get beat for having the wrong answers. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of different, eh? Yeah, very different. <laughs> very different, very different. But um, when you went into school, like in June, the year that you came here, how easy was that for you to adapt to the new system? You're coming from this uh, different education system in Zimbabwe. Now you're getting here to Australia. How was it easy for you to, in terms of um, adapting? I wouldn't say it was easy. Yeah. Um, obviously, first thing being having to speak English all the time. Yeah. Um, instead of just having like a basic knowledge. Of course. Yeah. And um, trying to make friends also was, is a little bit difficult because um, the levels where you've got something to relate to is not really there compared to back in Zimbabwe. So yeah, that's, I think it was difficult at the start, but being that young, it's very easy to adapt to a new environment. And yeah, I think that's what happened. Ah, beautiful. Do you miss uh, Zimbabwe? I do sometimes, I do. You do? Um, yeah, it's, I wouldn't trade it for the opportunities that we have here, but Absolutely. I do miss it sometimes. Yeah. Do you have any memories, any events that probably you think of that happened when you're in the Zim at some point in time? Um, it's you're young, young, I know so that. I'm yeah. very young, it's hard to remember. <laughs> um, but I do remember like a lot of the family trips that we did. Um, okay. To see my grandma and uh, most of our extended family when I was there. Okay. So even after you guys migrated here, you still had to go back to Zim to visit family and everything else? Yeah, I've only managed to go back once. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm planning to go back um, end of this year as well. Oh, end of this year? Yeah. Oh, end of this is 2022. Yeah, oh. So I'll be I'll be there in Jan- most of January. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. So we we just go to the right time, eh? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. And um, we spoke about I think prior to our interview, right? Yeah. Uh, you coming from the East suite, right? You are coming from the executive. Um, was being the director in there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but before I get to that, how does your day to day look like when you you know coming from home, go to the office? How does it look like? Okay, so I usually leave home about 8.20, okay. get to the office by 9 o'clock, and then um, I've got a schedule for every day. In the morning, I try to, I write, always write down a to-do list, so um, write down everyone I need to get back to, and then I make my phone calls up until about 12, 12 o'clock, and then have lunch, and then um, pretty much from the afternoon, it's always pretty much just doing the appointments. So, making sure that if I need to see, go see a client, I'll book that in. If I need to do an inspection with someone, that that's already booked in. So part of this morning calls is making sure that um, I've got my afternoon filled out. And then it depends on the day. So we've got like a weekly schedule on yeah. in terms of when we do open homes and everything. So some days there's not gonna be anything for me to do after five o'clock. So I might stay back, make a few more calls and make sure everything gets done. And then some days I'll have open homes. Um, like today, for example, I had open home at 5.30 and then I had one at six o'clock. So um, I had to do those two before I came here. Okay. Oh, nice, nice. Okay. So, okay, you you busy. You've done all these things. You you speaking to different people, but then you are twenty three years old, right? Yeah. You got your friends who are plus or minus your your same age. How do you relate with them? You're coming from you being a co-founder for a real estate, which is doing extremely well, you know, and you are going back to to your 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 friends from high school, from primary school. How do you relate with them? Um, 
a lot of friends that I had in high school and primary school, yeah. I don't really have them anymore. Um, most of the friends that I have now are friends that I've met through uh, family or other mutual friends. But yeah, to be honest with you, most of them are very ambitious people. Okay, okay. So yeah, so um, they are you know interested in some of the things that I'm interested in. So. For example, some of them are looking to buy their first properties and some of them are looking to move out. So they're asking on advice on what do they look for when I put in an application. Mm -hmm. And the ones that are looking to buy are asking for, oh, who do I speak to? Do you have a broker's number? So it's kind of reached that stage where most of my friends mm -hmm. are, you know, looking at getting into property and they are, you know, pursuing their own careers or they're pursuing something where it's, we do have a certain level where we can relate. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. So it kind of works out and just happened so that like the people that I did go to high school with, yeah. um, we kind of just drifted apart after high school. Oh, okay. Um, but I don't think whether if I was doing real estate and I was a director or if I wasn't, yeah. I don't think we'd still be as close of friends. Okay. So, but yeah. Okay. Um, the most valuable property that you've sold so far, how much is it? Uh, the most valuable one I sold was sold for $2.1 million. $2.1 million. Yeah. It was counted just like that. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> Were you like taking it back? It's like, oh, wow, that's a lot of money. Yeah, it definitely was um, at an auction. Yeah. So the emotions were high. And um, yeah, the owners were excited. And we're excited because it's pretty much our, uh, the top price that we've achieved. And yeah, yeah it's definitely a good achievement. Uh, that, that's a great one. Then you're coming from selling, you know, counting the 2.1 million, then you're coming back to your friends. I understand that you said, you know, you guys are relating very well. I'm not sure, maybe you want to, you know, your friends, you, you don't want to disappoint them, is it? <laughs> 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 but yeah, that's 2.1 million. Then, um, yeah, but but honestly, that's that, that's a great number. Yeah. That That's a great number in there. Um, as you go on, um, but I wrote, I saw that within your bio, that you are passionate about meeting new people, and you're always happy to give advice on all matters regarding real estate. Is that free advice? Yes, <laughs> that, that's free advice. Yeah. Free advice after yeah. hours or during uh, working, uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. That's always free advice. Um, there's a certain point where someone, um, there's an opportunity for someone to become an, a client. Yeah. And there's certain times where there's not, but I'm always happy to give advice. Oh, that's that's so good. Yeah. And um, you know, as, as you go on forward, um, you did explain to me, I wanted to understand the fact that when you were, because you, you worked in real estate for what, three years? Yeah, I've been in the industry for three years. For three years, yeah. before you co-founded um, your, your business, right? Yes. Okay. What really made you to say, okay, I want to have my business? What What was the clicking factor in there? Um, I think the clicking factor in me is like, I've always believed in ownership. Yeah. And I think that at a certain point, you have to flip the switch and become from being a worker to an owner. And um, I think what happened is that when I was working at my previous company, yeah, um, I was very lucky because I met someone who was, um, we had at that time probably eight years experience and they were looking for someone to work with um, and they were looking for someone to help them out because there were certain things that they were good at and certain things that I could help them with. So it kind of just was a partnership that was born out of necessity okay. and it wasn't the right timing. So we worked together for about two years prior to us starting um, our own sense. company. And at that time, um, it just sort of happened that, you know, the whole COVID thing happened and we had to sort of push it back. Oh yeah, yeah. And then um, sort of this year, we felt like it was the right time. And um, being in control of, you know, your schedule and everything was something that was important to us. And, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So it was just, it was the right timing and we just flipped that switch and said, this, if, if we don't do it now, then we might not do it later. So yeah, yeah we need to do it. Oh, that's, that's so good and very encouraging, eh? Yeah. Definitely. So then you were like 21, is it? Uh, when I first met him, yeah, I was 21. But when he started the business? Started the business was this year, so I was 20, uh, okay. 22. Tw okay, okay. Or, 20, or 2022? Yeah. When you're 23? Yeah, and I'm 23. Oh, okay, okay. Beautiful. That's so good. Uh, all right, for now, probably we might want to take a, sh a short break, and then soon we'll be back. Thank you, viewers, and welcome back to Admire the Art of Business. Admire Itai Myra, being your host. Today, we're having a chat with uh, Peter Kwaramba. And I was always want to go back to, to who you are. A man, young man, aged 23 years of old, uh, 23 years, finished high school at um, 2017. Now, just a couple of years down the line, 2022, you have 
founded your own company, real estate. Yes. That's that's great. We've spoken a number of things in there, but we, we want to look at, um, you know, one of your days you go in there. How do you say, okay, today was a successful day? What are the things that you might feel like, okay, today I've, I feel like I've really worked? Um, I think those days where you don't get off the phone, uh, <laughs> that's where the <laughs> really? successful days, because that means either you're getting a lot of, uh, you're building a lot of relationships with people, okay. or you're solving a lot of problems that are coming up. So it's one of those two things, but if, if you have a day where you don't get off the phone, then yeah, I would say that's a successful day because I mean, it pretty much means you're in touch with all of your clients yeah. and any issues that have come up, you've managed to resolve it. Okay. So in terms of um, relationship building, it's a big thing in terms of industry. Yeah, definitely. It's definitely a big thing in real estate. Okay. And word of mouth as well. Do you think it's, it's a big thing whereby people say, you know what, Peter does a fantastic job, then people start to refer you like a ripple effect? Yeah, definitely. Um, we do get a, a lot of our business from word of mouth. Okay. Uh, even today, I went out to a client and uh, we got that referral from one of our landlords. Ah. Oh. So yeah, if you're doing a good job, people always refer you business. Oh, that's so yeah. good. And for your company, which area do you normally concentrate in? Uh, is it just in Blacktown or you go um, somewhere else? Uh, we concentrate in Blacktown. Mm -hmm. So that's where we have most of our market share. Okay. Um, but pretty much all the surrounding areas around Blacktown as well. Oh, okay. Are you thinking of maybe going interstate? Do you want to go to uh, Perth? Do you, you know? Um, it's a little bit difficult yeah. uh, with real estate because um, Especially at the start, yeah. it would have to be myself or my business partner. One of us would have to be there. So yeah, someone would have to move to that state. To okay, manage. but why do you say that? Because it's a very um, hands-on industry. And um, I would say with real estate, mm -hmm. you always need someone that you can 100% trust to overshadow, especially the first few months of the company. Of the company. Yeah. Does that mean that when you started your own company, you guys were, you know, faced a couple of challenges? Yeah, we definitely did. Um, when we first started, we we're putting in um, six days a week um, and pretty much like 60 hours. So we're pretty much, yeah, it's like looking after a baby. Yeah, you yeah. can't afford to not be there and you just had to pretty much make everything work. There was yeah, a few challenges. Um, there was a lot of things that we thought we knew, but mm -hmm. we didn't. So okay. yeah, definitely. Okay. So you were saying like you go 60 hours a week. Yeah. Six days a week, like 10 hours every day. Yeah, 10 hours every day. Wow, that's so tiresome, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Wow. <laughs> okay, so um, you mentioned one thing as well, that um, uh, there were things that you thought, you know what, we know what we're doing here, or we, we, we have knowledge in this area. But when you go to the business, we realize that, okay, we need a bit of uh, upskilling in here. Yeah. What did you do about it? Um, so the first one yeah. that was probably the major thing yeah. was the property management side. Um, we had a great sales team. So the sales team was, we were doing good numbers before and the numbers were started picking up yeah. um, after we first started. But the, cause there's two sides to a real estate business. There's the sales side and then there's the property management side. So okay. the property management side, that's where we we weren't, we didn't have extensive knowledge on. Yeah. Um, and the easiest way to solve that is that we had to hire a property manager. Um, uh. And you know, we didn't plan to at the start, but we were going so fast that we had to get someone who knew exactly what they were doing and they could teach us as well so we know for the future. Okay, so was that the first person that you employed? Um, not necessarily because when we moved over, um, we did have, um, so we had myself, my business partner yeah. and uh, a one salesperson. Okay. And we also had one person that we had recently hired, but we told them that they'll be starting when we launch the company. Okay. And so we had um, two employees on board already. And so we had to hire a property manager too. Oh. Um, and then, so we started looking pretty much a month after we started. Okay. To hire someone. Yeah. Just 30 days down the line, you are looking for a manager already. Yeah. That's extensive growth. <laughs> <laughs> it is, yeah, it is extensive growth, but yeah, it was, it was necessary. It was yeah. necessary. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And so the property manager came with those kind of skills that your guy didn't have, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay. And from there, did you start to grow your business? Because now you are, you, are, you are telling me that the real estate market, there's property management and there's the selling part of it, right? Yeah. So in the property management, what did that, as soon as you got the property manager, did the business start to shoot up? Yes, yes, because it freed up um, a lot of my time and a lot of my business partner's time. Okay, yeah. Because we had someone where if there's a certain issue, 
then they know how to deal with it. So you pass the issue on to them. Mm. Whereas before, um, any complaints, any issues, and because the landlords know that you're the owner, yeah, yeah. they automatically come to you. So it, it was kind of like we're constantly getting our time distracted from what we need to be doing. And yeah, so having that property manager there, she could solve a lot of those issues for us. Okay, so you're not concerned with things that you like to do, like selling? Yeah, like selling, yeah. Okay, okay. And um, because you had that opportunity of having the property manager in there, did that also translate into the numbers in terms of the, um, the, the selling part of it? Did that start to grow as well? Yeah, definitely, definitely. The sales grew um, because, you know, obviously um, sales is a numbers game. So it is. the more people you speak to, the more business you're going to get. Um, but when you've got something that's taking away the time. the time, then you can't really make that many calls. You can't speak to that many people. But yeah, so having that property manager there, yeah, our sales definitely grew. Mm -hmm. It was gradual uh, because being a new company, um, people are still trying to find where you've moved to. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. They're still like tr still trying to. Some of them are calling your old company. Yeah, yeah. And then there's the old company is not telling them because obviously yeah. they don't want to lose the business. Of course, so, yeah. 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 But yeah, over time you gradually built up. You get the customers coming in. Yeah. Oh, wow. Great, great. Um, you spoke about the challenges when you started because the uh, the property management, then you, you you plugged in, you got the property manager in there. Is there another challenge that you you, you faced during that time? Um, I think it's the initially getting everything ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we didn't realize how much stuff you needed to get ready for a real estate business. Mm. Um, so there was like a list that we had of a checklist of everything we get we need to have ready for us to launch but things just kept getting added on because once we've uh moved into our site then we realized oh we need this as well yeah. we need this so it's kind of like um like it's it was tough because at a certain point our website wasn't ready but we had launched already so it's like yeah it's just there was a little difficulties here and there yeah yeah, yeah. a little bit of delays but over time you know it's things that we managed to sort out and it was a lesson learned like if we were to open up a new office in queensland like you said before, yeah 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 we would know exactly what what we needed because we learned two lessons in there oh yeah. nice nice that, that's so good you know the challenge that you faced as well during that um inception time um i think um another challenge would probably be um, that one is um you young right you go out in there people like just trust you just like that because you're young does that make any difference or it doesn't um it's definitely a challenge yeah yeah because now you have to instead of just selling yourself you have to obviously yeah oversell yourself because now you have to uh, convince them that because you're young yeah 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 you do have the necessary experience to be able to do what you're promising them. Mm, mm, especially the 2.1 million in there, then people are like, okay, Peter, are you, you going to deliver this or not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it becomes really difficult when you know, yeah, you're young. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What about uh, in terms of uh, the capital, in terms of investing, when you started, how hard was that? Was it easy just to roll it on like that? Or was it a bit of a challenge? No, it is a bit of a challenge. Um, myself and my business partner, uh, for a certain period of time, we didn't take any wages. Uh, just for the cash flow of the business. So it's a sacrifice that we had to make. Yeah. And yeah, it was necessary. But um, as far as the capital, the sales that we're making for previous companies, uh, we weren't taking the money out. We were holding it off because we knew that this is what we had in plans. Mm. So, mm. you know, um, we had a plan that, you know, we after we reach a certain amount, then mm. that money, we're going to use that to invest that as the capital for the business. Okay. So when you start your business, you get in there, you're working 60 hours a week. But you're not paying yourself. Yes. But you're paying other people. Yeah, we're paying other people. You're processing all the paychecks and everything else. So like, okay, there's a check, there's a check. Then you go home with nothing. Yes. <laughs> How hard was that? <laughs> it's really difficult. It's really difficult. And um, it is. it was a necessary sacrifice. Yeah. But yeah, it's a very. It's something that you have to get over mentally and understand that you're putting um, the business first and sacrificing mm. for it. Mm -hmm. And when you started your business, um, did you, what kind of support did you get from your family? Because I understand that you've got two sisters, uh, like from your family. What kind of support did you get from them? Um, they did support um, the idea and everything. Um, they always knew that's something that I wanted to do. So mm. they were happy that I was executing it. But um, obviously, um, my mom was a bit um, hesitant because 
of the risk that you know we're taking and you know i did explain to her like it's a new business there's a chance that it could fail yeah and we might have to go back to working from someone else but in my from my perspective um i knew that wasn't going to happen so you had to sit down with mom about that yeah and explain to her yeah <laughs> yes okay but how, how, how did she take that how did she take that when you're trying to explain yourself but obviously the whole family knew that you wanted to do business but now it's happening you're saying okay i'm starting tomorrow this is it um I think it took a while to adjust. Yeah. But um at first she didn't understand it, but I think over time when she saw the business growing and I think results always speak for themselves when she see, saw the team growing and us getting new people um hiring new people and you know just overall the company and our presence being more known in the area. Yeah. I think that's when she realized like oh this is actually going well and it's something that can be sustainable. It looks like my guy Peter is doing something in there. <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> That's good. That's really good. And uh, for the people of your age, right? Is there any encouraging words that you want to give out to uh, to the youngsters who are out there? Yeah, definitely. I think you have to take every opportunity that you get. Mm -hmm. And um, I got like, very lucky in the sense that I did have someone there that had a lot of experience. And that was me willing to become partners with me and mm. start this company. But I would always recommend everyone to whatever industry that you're interested in, find someone in that industry that you can look up to and someone that can you can learn from. And whether you start something with that person or you mm -hmm. branch off and start on your own, I'd always recommend. I always I'm a big believer in ownership and having control of um, something that you're putting that many hours into. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I would definitely recommend like if you've got that entrepreneurial spirit and you do believe that business is something that you can do, yeah. then I definitely recommend it. There's, especially when you're young, because there's no family, there's no commitment. You've pretty much got nothing to lose. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, very, that's very encouraging. Thank you very much, Peter, for having a chat with us. Thank you for having me. And thanks a lot for coming to us. And um, I'll talk to the viewers. Viewers, thank you very much for showing us with us right now. And um, I admire the art of business. You can check us on Instagram. And um, the name of the company, just take note on that. Uh, I'll go back to my notes. Sultani Property Group, is that right? Yes, that's right. Beautiful. So Sultani Property Group, that's the name of the uh, real estate that Peter Kwaramba owns. Uh, you guys, if you're looking at uh, selling your properties, if you're looking for uh, renting yeah, as renting, well. Renting them, yeah. Yeah, so there's two sides to our business. There's the sales, so if you're looking to sell, um, we've got salespeople that can do that. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking to rent out your property, or even if you're looking at renting yourself, you're mm -hmm. looking at buying. So there's two sides. For sales, mm -hmm. you're either selling or you're buying. And for rental, it's either you're, you've got a property that you want managed by someone or you've, you're looking for a property to rent out. So anyone that fits those categories, we can definitely help them out. Absolutely. And uh, I think I'm going to ask our producer as well to put on the link uh, for your website so that I can, people can visit the, uh, the website and see everything else. Thank you very much, of viewers, and um, admire Thai. That's all for you are. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.